We've got Titanium from Colombia, our number five seed, and he's going up against Crispy Co. from Australia, the number 11 seed. Awesome. So yeah, let's kick it off. So you got Titanium going on. He's been using Inventor since 2019, participated in a four-year degree in a robotics group, as well as he is obsessed with robotics arms. And if I remember correctly, doesn't he also 3D print and create robotics arms? I think he may. On top of that? I think he may. Awesome. So outside of that, we also have Crispy Co. over on the other side and named his son after Toby. I guess the question is, is did that happen before or after he got onto this channel and started watching the content? <laughs> outside of that, it is saying SolidWorks is one tricky pony. I think every software is, but the great thing with people like Toby and myself is we're here to train you in a way that you understand and can follow through. And he is awake at 3 a.m. So I guess, again, another question on my end, did he wake up at 3 a.m. or is he still running from the day before, right? Yes. Yeah, that is a great question. We actually, we did ask that question a little while back and we got to find out in the chat. We got to have the chat let us know if you know or what you think if Crispy Co. is still awake from the night before or if he is, uh, you know, just getting, just getting going now. All right, guys. Well, I'm very excited to show off this first model that we have created for you today. Don't forget to hit that like button. Hit it now. And then, of course, when I flash the model on the screen, you guys are going to have a chance to take a screen capture as well. So let's flip over to full screen this first. 3D CAD battle between Titanium, our number five seed from Columbia, running Inventor, and Crispy Co., our number 11 seed from Australia, running SolidWorks, begins in three, two, one, go! What is the mass of this part in XXX grams? The tolerance is plus or minus two grams. You'll notice that this is a tier five part, but I warned you in the beginning, Phil, that these models today are a little bit, a little bit uh, tough. They're all kind of right at the, at the peak between tier five and tier six. You can see that this part has the same geometry patterned into three places at 120 degrees. It is a weather station fan. Uh, w Gibius says, geez, in the chat. Our runners have grabbed a screen capture. Hopefully you and the audience have grabbed a screen capture. Let's see how they attack this thing. Man, it's such a challenge in this tournament. You have to first come up with a, a, you know, just like a basic overview of what the print looks like. And then you have to start figuring out what your first feature is going to be. And sometimes if you make the wrong decision on your first feature, it can really screw you up for the rest of the, of the model. I would just say, guys, take your time. Take a look at this print. Come up with a game plan. Don't feel like you got to jump right into it. It's a tier five model, so you got time to catch up. But wow, 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 what a model. I tell you what, it's kind of funny that this is the first part to come up. I was just joking with my wife that we have solar trackers and puppies. And if you could imagine, my puppies actually just chewed up my anemometer out there on one of my solar trackers. So I might have to get a copy of these models after the game and go ahead and print one out and replace it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was funny. We when we had the tournament a couple of years ago, uh, I had the, a part that was uh, that had was in my house. It was a part from my hot tub that had broken, and then I held up the actual physical parts of the screen, and I was like, "I'm just tricking all these guys into modeling these parts so I can 3D print replacements." That's right. We need we need one of those print farms as a sponsor now, so then we could just send it off and get it done. You know that that turnkey like our current sponsors for sheet metal and design. Exactly. Just print everything out. So we are seeing quite a difference though this go around on strategies getting into this. So I think we have somebody going for kind of a profile and a spin as well as somebody starting out with an individual feature. Yeah, exactly. If we were to, a lot of times in training, we take a model like this and we break it down in different sections. So we might call that center section the hub and then we might call that uh, cup section like one of the domes. And so we see the titanium on the left is working on that dome shape and we see Crispy Co on the right is working on the hub. He's kind of taking a look at that section view that was presented in the 2D print. We had a section view of that uh, kind of hub region. And so Crispy Co is working from that section view and trying to get that section view geometry into that hub area where uh, we see the titanium instead is taking on that dome shape. And I think there's merit to both. You know, the dome shape is obviously an anchor for the external uh, perimeter of the part. So that makes sense. But doing the hub right at the middle also makes sense. So definitely merit to both. I tell you what, uh, being on the machinist side, not so much on the design side, I would much rather, in this case, machine something like this than have to design it, I feel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it gets... This may be... 
Go ahead. This may be tier five design, but it's about a tier three in the world of machining. Okay. All right, good. Nice and easy to machine. We like that. Not too many undercuts or anything. Well, this definitely, definitely is a tricky part. It's, it's you know, I, I think that where Crispy Co. is working right now, looking down from the top, this is where things are going to get interesting because when you have a pattern like this, you have to decide, would it be easier to just draw the whole thing at once or would it be easier to draw one and try to pattern it? And obviously, we you know, we always encourage people to draw one and pattern it, but sometimes... You know, the, the, when you have to get geometry to a line in a pattern like this, you know, like a it's it's not a, a nice even number. It's an odd number. You have to get things to a line. You have to get edges to a line. You know, I could definitely see our runners taking either approach. No, 100%. Agreed completely. I mean, on my side of it, too, is do you start with a pie or do you try to or a pie slice versus the whole pie? Do you, you know, attempt one thing and kind of these tier five parts are to the point where I think we're going to see some people start over occasionally because there's going to be that got you. Wait a minute. I should have did this before that. Right. Yeah. The full restart, like when you have a sketch that you just can't solve. It's funny you say that because when I was auditing this part, I ended up having a full restart because I was trying to create that sketch for the arm that's sticking out and it just fought me the whole time. And I was like, forget it. Full restart. Like, scrap everything, start over. And sometimes that's, that's just the faster way to get to the end. Oh, correct completely. I tell you what, though, it is it is nice to always see, even though I do sell and support Inventor as a secondary is the similarities again between all the softwares is crazy close now on shape on a cell phone you know at a picnic bench at the park might be a little bit of a different argument <laughs> but i can say if we can classify that me personally remoting into my computer with a tablet is close to that yep same kind of concept right? sure yeah sure yeah, and that's the thing is that like the when I teach the beginners class, the beginners training class, you know, we use the terminology uh, parametric feature based 3D CAD modeler. Well, you know, as long as your CAD modeler is a parametric feature based 3D CAD modeler, it's going to be more similar than different to all the other parametric feature based 3D CAD modelers. So, I mean, those are really the the key the key terms that you use. And then you get into some differences, some key differences like the way the architecture is structured in the background and things like that, but yeah, this is uh, this is pretty cool to see both of our runners. You know, although Crispy Co started out with the hub and then created the dome, we can see the Titanium started out with the dome and now is creating the hub, and they're basically going to end up in about the same spot. Correct. I mean, again, as, as, as I tell everybody, there's no real wrong way to do it. Is there a more efficient way? Sure, but as long as you get to the outcome, how you got there, nobody cares, right? Nobody's going to see that sketch after you see a model. Yeah. Yeah. And we see Aaron C in the chat. He's one of our uh, one of the members of the YouTube channel, and he's got the uh, "I got it" icon going there in the chat. That's how he's indicating that he he's gone through. He took the screen capture. He went through, and he's already finished modeling this thing. One of our fastest runners during Model Monday Live, and he was third place in the world last year, and uh, showing that he's still got it. He's not getting any slower. What do you remember? What CAD software he was using, by the way? He's a SolidWorks user. He's a SolidWorks user. Yep. Awesome. Yep. I mean, at a quick glance without giving any hints, I mean, from my background, this is looking to be maybe about a three sketch type of part, maybe a two mm, sketch part. Interesting. And then depending depending on your, uh, your design tree, your workflow could do a lot in a short period of time. Very, very interesting. I like that observation. And we're going to see what how many sketches these guys end up using. But yeah, Eric Gutierrez in the chat says this model is amazing. Um, we see, uh, yeah, this this is definitely uh, an interesting model. You know, definitely an interesting model. And there's there's definitely several ways that you could, you could uh, get through this one. Can we go ahead and throw that uh, drawing back up on the screen for everybody out there trying to practice on their own or sure. just curious as to what the final product is going for? Sure. Let's bring this up. I'm going to kind of, I don't want to take away too much of the action from our runners, but we'll bring this up here and give everybody a chance to maybe do a screen capture again. You guys can see here awesome. what we're getting into on this thing. It's, it's one arm with the dome patterned three times, but how do you get that pattern to, you know, to line up? That's the... It's part of the challenge. You know, something kind of funny that I see a lot of times, the difference between designers and makers, as I would say, is the idea of creating a solid versus cutting away from a solid tends to get overlooked. Yes, it's funny you say that. We had Ivan the Reasonable, our 
uh, world champion from a few years back, uh, doing co-commentary a few weeks back, and he brought up that same exact topic of uh, you know of working with subtractive manufacturing versus additive, and even Victor K. When Victor K. was co-commentating, he brought up that same thing. You know, like when you're looking at a model, if you, if you start machining a lot, then you tend to get more into you know what they call subtractive manufacturing, uh, and uh, you know that just sounds like kind of a fancy new word for it for cutting chips, but. It's uh, it's really interesting how it can kind of change the way you approach these types of challenges. Maybe we should trademark those terms. We'll call it additive modeling versus subtractive modeling. Yeah, oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Rambrose in the chat I think I, saying got it. Dom Linder in the chat saying got it. Go ahead, Phil. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I think honestly, coming from that background of a subtractive manufacturing, maybe it's just the way a thought process, right? Like. If you're somebody that likes to 3D print, you're used to building something up kind of in a layer or as it's going to be produced. In my world, it's about shaving it out of a big old block and making a lot more money on a smaller block, right? Yes, yes. Very, very true. Oh, we're getting okay. there. I see some things happening pretty quick here. Yeah, Crispy Co. coming through. I like that. I, I think we also got to see Crispy Co. using a delete face there. We love delete face. Whenever delete face gets used, we all get excited in the chat. There's Barry coming through the chat. Noticed it as well, BGH. Delete face. Yes, yes, indeed. Ex Machina, I what's up? I did see a couple, couple moves there in SolidWorks that I did like with a pattern of a sketch, and then he was actually controlling the and, pattern of the sketch well, in instances all in one shot. And so we see that Crispy Co. has come into the chat, fully defined, our runner, fully defined, has come into the chat with the answer, three, four, six grams. And that is correct. <laughs> And congratulations to Crispy Co. getting that dome, getting that answer in there. It was funny, like my brain is so locked in on the on the name Crispy Co. that when I saw fully defined in the chat, I was like, hey, you're not supposed to answer in the chat. And then I remembered like, oh wait, no, that's Crispy Co. <laughs> so GG I tell you and what, Crispy that might Co. be that might be a requirement next go around is that your name in the <laughs> actual meeting has to match the name in chat, right? Wow, wow, wow. But guys, what a great battle there between those guys. That was uh that was a really tough model and they they both got through it really fast. We see titanium on the left there saying GG. They were both running through it. It had a dome in it, it had a revolve in the middle of it. Man, that's not easy geometry and very impressive from both of our runners getting through that. Let's put a GG in the chat for our winner, Crispy Co. That's one battle down, but it's not over yet. You gotta win two battles in order to advance to the final four. But wow, 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 good job to Crispy Co. Fully defined, as he's known in the chat. 346 was his answer. I came up with 347, plus or minus two grams. Had a little bit of a